have a good day uh, today i'm going to speak about women in cardiology and the impact on the heart diseases vijay lakshmi and when i visited mayo clinic i was immensely pleased to see great women in medicine and there is a tribute to paid by them in mayo This is Dr Anandi Joshi she was the first indian woman to obtain a degree in the western medicine and she is in the picture with her other three colleagues in the pennsylvania in 1886 in fact in 1908 dr maud elsbeth abbot she was the first woman to be take interest in the congenital heart disease and she wrote congenital heart diseases in 400 cases because she, as a woman she was not allowed to present the papers and she had to send her assistants the male assistants to present her paper then she came out with a brilliant idea of producing or writing an atlas of congenital heart disease which was published in 1936 and it described 1000 cases became the basis for the modern pediatric cardiology and dr william ostler a teacher of teachers said it is by far the very very best thing ever written on the subject of heart disease and when we were students 3 decades ago we always read the clinical recognition of congenital heart diseases by joseph parlop and that was like a gospel for us but unfortunately there was no treatment or management written in that so when we came out with our comprehensive approach to congenital heart disease my co editor dr reema chuk who happened to be the student of joseph parlop she requested him to write a preface for us and he readily agreed and wrote this 1000 plus page book is a remarkable achievement that addresses the seemingly impossible task of the spectrinital heart diseases from the third week of intrauterine life to the end of life issues three exceptional editors have chosen to achieve this goal dr ib vijayalakshmi dr p samsundar rao dr reema chug together they represent three generations who have witnessed the major advances since the first blue baby was operated at john hopkins hospital in 94 an attractive feature of this book is seamless continuity from the embryo to neonate child adolescent and adulthood 14 sections are written by separate authors but the text reads as a single author the book is a tribute to the authors and a rare tribute to the gift to the readers and to tell you frankly dr crystal bronhutton of mayo clinic she wrote a book review and published in the european heart journal and today the contribution by women is seen by all so first of all helen brook tossing an american cardiologist working in baltimore and boston who founded the field of pediatric cardiology a co-developer of the first successful blue baby operation which is famous shunt or a blalock tosic shunt the procedure was developed at john hopkins hospital uh, along with alfred blalock when she went to gross who di- who uh, ligated the pda and asked him to do it he refused and he said look here my lady i am here to ligate or close a duct and not to create one and then she came back and along with alfred she came out with this technique and also known for her work in banning the thalidomide which was widely recognized as a highly uh, she was known as a highly skilled physician and was called as the mother of pediatric cardiology we all owe our clinical acumen to her she overcame an early childhood handicap of dyslexia and became deaf in the later part of her career she learned to 
use lip reading techniques and hearing aid to speak with the her patients and her finger other than stethoscope to feel the rhythm of their heartbeats lip reading came as a gift to her and we owe a lot to this great coming to the indian scenario the first formal department of cardiology in india was started in christian medical college what is called as cmc velour in 1957 by dr kamala vaithilingam who brought modern cardiology to india after a period of training at st john's hopkins hospital hospital baltimore in the early 1950s the dm cardiology training course was first started in cmc velour in 1965 she did a year training with helen tosig in 19 the availability of the surgical help allowed her to look after both adults as well as the pediatric patients she established one of the earliest cardiac catheterization laboratories in india and she is the first to cath lab and we have another first lady the first indian doctor who completed training in pediatric cardiology She studied congenital heart disease as a fellow with none other than Dr. Helen Tosik from 1948 to 1951, and subsequently in pediatric cardiology department in Boston at Massachusetts General Hospital. She had a rare privilege of publishing a paper, "Results of Operation for Pulmonary Stenosis and Atresia Trans um, Transactions" with Dr. Helen Tosik in association with the other American physicians in 1950 and this is the picture because she is a source of inspiration to me and I became a cardiologist and a pediatric cardiologist because of her and when I got my gold medal for KK Date oration she blessed me so on her return to India she was shocked to find the wards full of young women and children with the acute rheumatic fever and the rheumatic heart disease and then from congenital she took her interest to the rheumatic heart disease as she did not have access to the surgical management like in cmc velour the pediatric cardiac patient she had to predominantly look after the adults she opened a cardiac clinic in lady hardinge hospital where there was lot of children with the chd and in 1980 she published her paper congenital heart disease in delhi school children and she became an authority in rheumatic heart disease and this is how she is still working at the age of 100 101 100 deva hospital and this is a large hospital 550 bed hospital which is devoted only to cardiac cases bangalore is a town of some 5 million people in south india and before uh, vj uh, started her work there were, there was no uh, place in south india for children with cardiac uh, cardiac problems to go um, so that what we have with us today is uh the voice for poor children with cardiac disease in south india and uh even though it's only one voice it's a very strong voice and it speaks uh it speaks forcefully for the needs of children with heart disease what i'd like to uh offer to you today is that you'll be hearing probably the only lecture you'll hear in your medical career on rheumatic heart disease you're hearing it from a person who sees and treats children with rheumatic heart disease every day and it will probably not only be the only lecture but it will for sure be one of the best lectures of of any that you'll ever hear uh for this particular topic and it's with great pleasure that i present uh, dr vj lakshmi shuresh great tribute lecture i met edward kaplan who had already written that penicillin has failed in his editorial detection of active rheumatic carditis is of great 
prognostic and therapeutic importance and is currently based on zones criteria the fact that the penicillin has failed to eradicate this disease process is irrefutable proof of the need for the more laboratory epidemiological and clinical research when due to her when when i told him that the echo should be added as a major criteria in the zones criteria he said vj all are not as good as you in echocardiography and they will make over a diagnosis for that comment i replied ed would you like to err on the right side or the wrong side hey vj what's that then i said ed you make an over diagnosis just put it, the patient on the penicillin prophylaxis which is less than quarter dollar and then the child is normal or you err on the wrong side where you miss the diagnosis no secondary prophylaxis and the child goes for either balloon valve plasty or the major surgery double valve or valve repair and then ultimately dies of the heart failure which to choose then he said oh you are disarming me you are disarming me and he raised both the hands and the whole audience clapped that shows that they had agreed that echo is good to make the diagnosis so he said the blessings has to be earned and he gave this book after uh, or, i mean uh, his autograph and he said that i should work on echocardiographic crit which i gave the grand round continued in the future and here is a patient who was diagnosed as a rheumatic carditis on zones criteria and then was put on steroids and because of steroids the primary complex flared up and then the child developed meningitis and then after treating the tuberculous meningitis they referred the child to me for the murmur in the on auscultation and when i did the echo i saw that just below the iot is a subiotic membrane so clinical acumen zones criteria can lead to lots of errors and when you look at the echo in another patient here you can see that how there is a thickened valve reduced pml mobility severe aortic regurgitation as well as the aortic uh, mitral regurgitation and there is no doubt that this is at rheumatic so this is clinically diagnosed as a case of rheumatic heart disease with mr with severe pulmonary hypertension and when i did the echo i was surprised to see the glistening hyperechogenic endocardium whenever there is a glistening hyperechogenic endocardium that indicates ischemia so that never happens in rheumatic so in the short i confirmed that it was an alkappa and then on angiogram we confirmed that that was a abnormally arising left coronary artery from the pulmonary artery and then the child went to minnesota surgery so when you come back to the echo features this is the post mortem of a patient with the acute carditis where small thrombi form on the valve tip at the edge giving rise to a ridge or a row of small pink nodules or like looking like aphthous ulcers and this on the echo is seen as a beaded appearance and once you have a beaded appearance of the mitral valve tricuspid valve or even the aortic valve it is a rheumatic carditis and we were taught how to look for the nodules on the extensors and in the autopsy they showed the nodules which were studded in the mitral valve but today we can see those nodules even before the death of the child without even palpating on the echocardiography this is pet on the uh, mitral valve not only that we were taught the cooing murmur indicates stretching of the caudate tendine but in fact the tear of the caudate tendine can be made out very well uh, in case of um, with the echo not only that suppose the patient has got a rheumatic fever whether it is a recrudescence of rheumatic activity or a complication of that due to the bacterial endocarditis can be made out very well 
by the echo as in this 12 years old patient who came with the fever and breathlessness for three weeks and here you can see that at the tip of the anterior mitral leaflet there is a perforation and the severe mitral regurgitation is due to the bacterial endocarditis. So after my first paper I came out with the echo criteria called as a Vijaya's echo criteria for which I gave for each one two points and then mitral valve, aortic cuspid valve thickness more than 4 millimeter, mitral valve, aortic valve regurgitation or and then the mitral valve prolapse then where only the tip of the AML is prolapsing, rheumatic nodules that is the beaded appearance or the thickening and pericardial effusion indicating pancarditis, caudal tear and reduced mobility of the valves and then increased hyper echogenicity of the submitral structures. All of them uh, we have to look for and if the score is more than 6 it indicates rheumatic otherwise rare and not rheumatic. And ultimately everyone started publishing their data of the subclinical carditis and then they came out with this 2015 new zones criteria by the American Heart Association or the scientific uh, thing and in that 25 uh, studies were uh, published and that the two largest series are our series from India and so today Ed Kaplan the importance of the echo in making the diagnosis and the writing group concludes that echocardiography with the Doppler should be performed in all cases of confirmed or suspected acute rheumatic fever were there and this prophylaxis. And we have another great lady, Dr. Savitri Srivatsava received the lifetime achievement from uh, PICS and she did her MBBS from uh, uh, called Gaulier and Agra University in 1957 and did her DM at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences in 1977 and subsequently you know she did her fellowship in pediatric cardiology at the University of Minnesota Minneapolis where I was also trained later on in 1998. She to All India Institute and her special achievement in the field of interventional cardiology all this time everyone was only in making the diagnosis but now there was a lady who came with the interventions for the uh, um, uh, uh, congenital heart disease and apart from that she came out with the static balloon dilatation in TGA patients where earlier the inflamed uh, indone was pulled across the intraatrial septum to make the sept, uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, AST bigger but then she came out with the static balloon technique as appreciated by all. This is Liz Bronlin uh, and she also reported for the first time in the world the percutaneous catheter commissurotomy in the rheumatoid stenosis and in the New England Journal of Medicine she published in 1985. She was also instrumental in doing a procedure for the first time in India in All India Institute. She was awarded PICS award and it's her composed pediatric vision is immense. Uh, impressed by her she was my mentor and I got trained and then I started doing doing the balloon valplasty for the juvenile mitral stenosis. Now I have more than 3400 patients where this is called as the malignant uh, mitral stenosis in children cardiac transplant card very very severe as you see here the LV is so small and it is very difficult to introduce the balloon across the cardiologist. When you look at the orifice here it is 0.2 square centimeter in a 10 years old child and then the profile of the stretch profile of the uh, balloon itself is uh, so uh, 3.8 so it is very difficult to cross. She got me uh, stenosis in these patients and here you can see that the gradient across is whopping 35 by 15 and the post PTMC it has come down to 13 by 7 and so this is like giving a new lead train there uh, who are going to die otherwise. So when I uh, uh, presented this in TCT uh, Washington DC the two Japanese doctors they came and copied it and then they said 
can we give a gift to the that you are doing in India and they gave me a beautiful inlay worked box and friends when I was a student my teachers taught me a patient with rheumatic heart disease should not get married if they get married they should not have children and if they have one child not to go for the another child but thanks to the technique today we are able to give a not only a new lease of life to the young women girls like this we can allow them to get and have children and then lead her and then she was in happy normal life but unfortunately many people are not using the echo the way it has to be used so this patient clinically was diagnosed as, as the dilated cardiomyopathy elsewhere and came with the cardiogenic shock and when i did the echo i was shocked to see that this was a rheumatic fever patient rheumatic heart disease patient with a severe aortic regurgitation and because of that the lv dilated and after my required the double valve Uh, replacement so the tertiary prevention is balloon dilatation or surgery or valve repair or the replacement whatever it is this is already too late see that uh, the uh, surgery is done earlier or intervention is also done earlier so dr p s shrimati was the first pediatric cardiac surgeon in uh, chennai what was called as mud's days and we have our own dr ramesh arora a great mentor and a teacher and a great source of inspiration to many she established the registry of transcatheter non coronary intervention procedures in our country and then she started the non surgical device closure for the patients with the ductus sarcoma as well with the rashkin device umbrella in 1987 and valvular uh, stenosis she started ptmc with the uh, double lens field balloon uh, in 1990 and then uh, she was the first one to start uh, closure of perimembranous vst also and not only the varieties of uh, cases she also started using the amplards or devices in 1998 when i also started so first human a uh, use of specially designed perimembranous vst was done by her uh, and then she published it uh, in 2000 and there was a time when she used to use rare cardiac lesions also like coronary av fistula pulmonary av fistula and lots of them were closed for the first time by her and then uh, at that time she used to be presented as as the lady who has done the highest number of ptmcs on this planet when i went to uh, in, uh, minnesota uh, this is with the dr kurt amplards who is the inventor of the amplards device with his son in law and then he asked me we jengaluru and when i said he asked me to pinpoint and put a red dot saying that we were also doing the device closure as early as in 1998 so this is in his uh, factory where a lady is stitching the a uh, polyester material inside the device and that is 35 years ago with great guy uh, kurt amplards who called me and then this is how the closure was done and later on lots of techniques like catheter assisted were done and this was one of my earlier patients who was 60 years old undiagnosed ast with this picture after device closure this is how x ray look we brought a revolution in the management of congenital heart disease and regarding the patent ductus arteriosus i was the first one to start closing the pdas in less than 6 kilos babies though the Um, uh, uh, on the box it is written that it should not be used for less than 6 kilometers uh, 6 kg babies i have given in 6 day old baby and in one of my earliest cases where our assessment was not good this was a pda ph when the device was released it shot like a bullet into the aorta and i was worried what to do i pulled it down to the left common iliac artery pushed it there and then when the screw was fixed inside the left common iliac artery and then 
the whole device was pulled into the sheath as if you are loading it. When I presented it in Toronto in 2001 and everybody was so thrilled and after uh, three years a Swedish man uh, came, VJ, I did it, I did it, I did it. I said, what you did? Then he said, I also fixed the screw inside and retrieved the device. And today, fixing the devices whenever they embolize with the screw has become common. And But that was done in the last time. And balloon dilatation for coarctation in the neonate was not done unless there was a LV dysfunction. And this is one of our earliest patients who had a 40 days old baby with 220 by 110 millimeters of mercury with ejection fraction of 35 after the balloon dilatation of that patient recovered. In the past, we were taught by our teachers, put all your eggs in one basket and not to make two different diagnoses. But here is my patient who had mitral stenosis, atrial fibrillation in pulmonary edema, but at the same time had a tight cooptation. So I dilated both simultaneously CSI. The mid-thoracic iota obstruction, iota arthritis is common in our country. And in the past, they used to die in a, with the florid congestive cardiac failure. No more, we can dilate that and put the stent really save them. So this is a renal hypertension patient. In the past, they used to go for the nephrectomy, but no more. We can put a coil. This is one of my patients where I have just closed it with the coil and then the blood pressure came down uh, without even the drugs to. So we have started closing the VSTs and here you can see the 24 millimeter device I have closed to literally bring down the pressure and make these children who would have gone for Eisenmengers who would have been very difficult for the surgeon to have all been treated. This is a non-compaction with the ventricular tunnel, the first case in the world to be closed with the device and then Kurt Amplatz had given three devices and when I asked him to give me some advice, he said nobody advise you VJ, use your clinical acumen and do it because 35 years ago with Lily High, he had uh, been in the group who closed this ventricular tunnel with the uh, plug, vascular plug. And then uh, he himself came out with so many vascular plugs when we started using them. And this is a rare case of uh, aneurysm because of the child had fallen in from the bullock cart, had an injury and aneurysm, make limb. And I closed it with the two uh, amplatzer. Uh, duct occluded two devices and the child became all right when I presented in the pics and uh, Kurt Amplatz was there and he asked me how I did it he didn't ask he asked me VJ what is bullock cart because they seen a bullock cart and today any through two tiny holes one for the femoral vein and one for the femoral artery and Towards these interventions in our country, the women have contributed immensely. And not only that, in August 6th, which is my birthday too, in 1986, Dr. Indira Hindu, Hinduja successfully delivered the India's first in vitro fertilization baby. We are experts in doing the fetal echocardiography in Dwapar Yuga when Krishna was telling how to enter the chakra vyuha, Abhivanyu in the mother's womb was saying yes. But today, for the children to enter the chakra vyuha of this world, whether their heart is normal or not, can be made out very well by the fetal echocardiography done between 18 to 22 weeks. A number for this fetal echo. And here you can see that if there is a complete AV canal defect, we can do the blood karyotyping and if there is a genetic problem, we can explain to the parents and advise for them. And lots of women are helping many women and children and giving a new lease of life. This is one of them like a hydrospitalis 
uh, child was born uh, with the cesarean section in the evening and the child did not cry was put on ventilator and echo showed a pinpoint aortic stenosis within 14 hours after the birth balloon dilatation of the aortic valve with just 4 millimeter ptmc balloon the child became all right and you can see that the gradient came down it is so mischievous the mother can't run behind the child even the percutaneous aortic valve replacements are done by women and not only that even the catheter mitral valve repairs are also being uh, done by the women so in this man's world we can see in the uh, miami marathon in the pics it is all women but then we women with the sari, we have learned to fly high majestically and save the precious lives. There was a time when a mother used to try to protect her children and women used to balance their lives and struggle to balance their life. But today, women that I have showed you in the have contributed a lot. Now there is, you can see whether you want to give contribute in what way the women can contribute like how i'm showing here that it's a live demonstration of the device closure in a case of um, six kg baby in kuala lumpur um, uh, malaysia and this is was so attractive at that time even the japanese and others were not uh, device closure at that time we started whereas women in the west were attracting the others so whether you want to attract and distract and cause tragedy or uh, re re reduce the tragedy by saving the precious life the choice is yours women have to work harder than men at times women have to turn upside down to see the lopsided world and women challenges are plenty solutions are scanty but still the results are never empty as women have become related to uh, the society and their determination dedication has changed the whole lot of life to everyone so women in medicine have contributed to the healthy heart and the healthy nation thank you very much for your kind and the patience